Hi, and welcome back to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is a red coder? Well, I'll tell ya. So, as is the case with a lot of redstone contraptions, it is useful to first visualize it as a black box. So, as you can see here, we have a black box, and a line of redstone lamps here, and one of them is on. And so, if we come over here to this item frame with the arrow in it, and give it a quick spin, you can see that the lamp that is lit has moved along this line. So now it's the second one, and now it's the third one, now it's the fourth one, and so on all the way to the eighth one, as you can see down there. And if we spin it one more time, it moves back to the front. A key observation here is that only one of the lamps is on at any given time. So anytime that I rotate this arrow, you can see that all the rest of them are off except for that one. That's a lot different than, say for example, a simple line of redstone coming off of this comparator. You can see that when I spin the arrow, then it does march along, but you can see that all of the lamps behind it stay on, so it's not a single signal that's coming out of this. The red coder actually gets its name from its real-life counterpart, the decoder, which functions in a very similar way. Whereas the red coder turns a signal strength into one of many outputs, the decoder turns a binary combination of its inputs into one of many outputs. Now, of course, it's possible to build a decoder in Minecraft as well, but thanks to signal strength, redstone is a little bit more than just a binary on and off signal, which means we can extract more information out of a redstone line than just whether it's on or off. So outside of computational redstone, you'll be seeing a lot more red coders out there than decoders. So with that said, let's tear into this thing and see exactly what's going on under the hood. And so there we go, that's the guts of it. And by the looks of it, this wandering trader over here is also very interested in redstone. But anyways, as you can see, whatever is going on here is a little bit more complex than that singular line over there. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly what's going on now. Cycling this arrow back to its original position, it's a little bit easier to see what might be going on here. So you can see that this comparator is outputting a signal strength of one. Now this signal strength of one doesn't quite make it up to here, so this repeater is unaffected. However, if you go down here, you can see that it's still going into this block, which is turning off this torch. And because this torch is turned off, this torch is turned on. And now rotating it by one position, you can see something interesting happen. So now this comparator is kicking out a signal strength of two, which actually has enough strength to make it up to this block and then power this repeater. This repeater is now inverting this torch here, which turns this off. Stop pushing me around, man. So as I was saying, this redstone dust over here now has enough power to make it up to this block, which then can power through this block and get into this repeater, which overrides what this torch had done by turning off, and it turns off this torch here. And now popping down below again, you can see that what was happening over here when the arrow was in its first position is now happening here. So now it has the strength to make it to the second layer, but back over here, this redstone does not have the strength to make it to the second layer. So this repeater remains off, but this torch turns off, which leaves only this torch to be on, and that's exactly how it works. So in essence, what happens when you rotate this arrow is that the signal underneath moves on one further than this signal here, and so it disables what was happening before while enabling what is happening here. Now, one thing to note is that some of you may have seen a red coder before, and you may have seen it built like this instead without target blocks and more redstone on top like this. Now this is also a valid way to do it, but using the target blocks, although slightly more expensive, is probably going to be a little bit more lag efficient too, although the difference is very negligible. So now that we're pretty familiar with this design here, let's see it in action in some of the things that I've built. Oh, hello there. So first up is my armor shop which if you're unfamiliar with it, you can see me actually build this thing in a two-part series that's linked in the description and in the iCard up in the top right. So the way that you interface with this machine is you go over to this lectern and you flip through this book to find which armor that you want, and then from there, you call it using this button. That signal gets picked up with this comparator and gets transported all the way down here 
where we see, ah, look at that, our very familiar friend, the red coder. And you can see that this red coder is set up mostly traditionally, but you can see that the second torch is moved all the way over here, and that's because it's done on a selection circuit. So our very familiar one torch on is actually showing up over here. Then I have it set up so that when these slime blocks move above these torches, then finally the signal gets moved onto here, and then it's inverted here. So you can see here that any sort of selector interface is a great use case for a red coder. Now onto the next example. So here we're in our world with the elevators, that's my V1 elevator and this is my V2 elevator. And you might be thinking, just kind of looking through the circuitry, where do you find a red coder in here? So here, instead of using a full red coder, I've borrowed some things from the red coder in order to detect specific signal strengths. First up is over here in my floor selection circuit. So basically what I want to do is when I accidentally choose the floor that we're actually on, so this one is two, then we want to lock this repeater as it's being done here. Now, of course, I only want this to happen when we are selecting the floor that we're on. So if I go further than that, then this would have to be unlocked. And if I go to any other floor, then this would still be unlocked. And only when I choose floor number two, will this be locked. So here you might be able to see some familiar circuitry. So if I switch over to spectator mode, you can see that this comparator is powering this block, which is powering this piece of redstone. But this redstone is on a signal strength of one, so it doesn't have the strength to get up to here. However, this block is also powering this piece of redstone, which is going into this torch, which is going into this torch. So what we have here conceptually is exactly the same as the regular red coder. You can see that on this side we have two pieces of redstone and a block and a repeater going into this block. And on this side we've got one piece of redstone going into a block, going into a torch, going into the same block that this repeater is powering with a torch on it. So you can see that this is basically a rearranged version of one slice of the red coder. And as for how I'm calibrating the signal strength, you can see that this barrel over here has a single item in it, which means it has a signal strength of one that is being read by this comparator here. This comparator here is on subtract mode, so it'll only start outputting when it gets a signal strength of two or higher. And then you can see that when we go higher than two, exactly the same thing happens as with our regular red coder. This redstone is now a signal strength of two, which has the strength to get up here, which powers this repeater, which powers this block, which overrides what was happening with this torch here. You see, another place where you would want to detect the exact signal strength that's coming in is when you want to determine whether or not you want to stop the elevator at your floor. So you can see that we've got another deconstructed red coder over here. You've got your comparator reading off of a barrel, which is going into a comparator here in subtract mode, and you've got your two redstone lines here going into repeater and you've got your one redstone line here going into another repeater you can see that this is going into a block with a torch this one is going into a block that is also getting power from the torch below it and you can see that this torch is the output here and of course this here looks even more different than the last example because there's no target blocks and there's more repeaters but i hope you can see that it does the exact same thing anyway and there you have it, a short introduction to what the heck red coders are. Hope you learned something, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this video and subscribe for more redstone guides like this. Alright, that's it. Bye.